still on the application of differential calculus. This time around, we'll talk about maximum and minimum values, maximum and minimum points as well. Okay, so let's start by talking about stationary points. A point on a curve at which dy dx is zero is called a stationary point or a turning point. And the value of the function at that point is called a stationary value. Now, look at this problem. I want to determine the stationary point of the function y equal to 4x cubed plus 15x squared minus 18x plus 7. All right, so I'll have to set the gradient function to 0. The gradient of this curve, the gradient function will be dy dx equal to, let's differentiate. Differentiate 4x cubed and we'll get 12x squared, 12x squared. 3 times 4, 12. 3 minus 1 is 2. Differentiate 15x squared and we'll get 30x. 2 times 15 is 30. 2 minus 1 is 1. Differentiate minus 18x and we'll get minus 18. Differentiate 7 and we'll get 0. So this is the gradient function of the curve. At the stationary point, dy dx is equal to 0. So I will set this to 0. This is a quadratic equation, and I'll have to solve it for x. I can see that 6 can be factored out from the left-hand side. That is 6 brackets 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 equal to 0. I'm factoring it out to make my factorization easier. If I divide both sides by 6, I'll be having 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 equal to 0. So I'll have to solve this equation now. Okay? So let's factorize the left-hand side. I'll need two numbers when multiplied to give me the product of 2 and minus 3, which is minus 6, and when added to give me 5. The numbers are 6 and minus 1. So this left-hand side will become 2x squared plus 6x minus 1x minus 3 equal to 0. Let's factorize this first two. 2x two can come out. We'll have x left and we'll have 3 left here. So that 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 3 is 6x. Then minus 1 can come out here. We'll have x plus 3 equal to 0. So we have 2x minus 1. Then I'll pick one of the brackets, x plus 3, equal to 0. This means that 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. And if this is so, from here, x is equal to half. And from here, x is equal to negative 3. So the stationary points are x equal to 1 over 2 or x equal to minus 3. We can determine the stationary values of the function at this point. All right? It's just to plug in these values for x into the function here. So the two values that we we'll get are the stationary values. Right. So let's talk about maximum and minimum points as well as the maximum and minimum values. I'll use two methods to explain this particular aspect. This is the first method analysis. Going by the first method I have here, I'll have to determine the sign of the gradient of the curve just before and after the stationary point. If the sign change for the gradient of the curve is positive to negative, then that is the maximum point. If it changes from negative to positive, it is a minimum point. But if it changes from positive to positive or negative to negative, we call that a point of inflection. A point of inflection, that is, 
There is no minimum. There is no maximum. So I'm going to use this first method to determine the minimum and the maximum point as well as their values of a particular function. Watch till the end. Find the maximum and minimum values of the function y equal to 4x cubed plus 15x squared minus 18x plus 7. The first thing is to determine the gradient function of this curve. That is the y dx. The y dx is equal to what? This is the function I use to explain stationary point. And the gradient was this. 12x squared plus 30x minus 18. Okay? So, I will set this to 0. So, if we solve this resulting quadratic equation, we'll get x equal to half or x equal to minus 3. These are the stationary points. Let me just do this. If I divide all through by 6, I'll have 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 equal to 0. It's the same thing, all right? So I'm only trying to make the work easy. The stationary points are x equal to 1 half or x equal to minus 3. So how do we know, using the first method analysis, which of these points will produce the maximum value or a minimum value. When x is slightly less than one half, allow me to write one half as 0 0.5. One half is the same thing as 0 0.5. When x is slightly less than 0 0.5, which is one half, let's say 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1. Let's subtract a very small number from 0 0.5. That's 0 0.4. See, 0 0.4. Slightly less than 0 0.5. I subtracted a very small number, 0 0.1, from 0 0.5, and I got 0 0.4. So I want to plug in 0 0.4 into this gradient function. 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. The y dx is equal to, let's plug in 0 0.4 here. 2 times 0 0.4 squared plus 5 times 0 0.4 minus 3. 2 times 0 0.4 squared plus 5 times 0 0.4 minus 3 is equal to minus 0 0.68. What if when x is slightly greater than 0 0.5? When x is slightly greater than 0 0.5, which is our one half. Let's see. Here we subtracted 0 0.1. So we can now add 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 to give us 0 0.6. So let's plug in 0 0.6 into the same gradient function, this, and see what it will produce. That will be 2 times 0 0.6 squared. I'm looking at this now. Plus 5 times 0 0.6 minus 3. What would this be? 2 times 0 0.6 squared plus 5 times 0 0.6 minus 3 is equal to 0 0.72. The principle is, if the gradient sign changes from negative to positive, then that point is a minimum point. The gradient change from negative to positive. This is positive 0.72, right? If it changes from negative to positive, then that point is a minimum point, all right? It's obvious that this one is going to be a maximum, but let's check it out. So, when x is slightly less 
down minus 3. Let's say minus 3.1. Let us plug in minus 3.1 into this gradient function. This is 0 0.72, okay? You can see that it is positive when it is slightly less than minus 3. What if it is slightly greater than minus 3? When x is slightly greater than minus 3, let's say minus 2.9, all right? I hope you know that minus 2.9 is greater than minus 3. So let's plug in this value of minus 2.9 into this gradient function. That will be 2 brackets minus 2.9 all squared plus 5 times minus 2.9 minus 3. What's equal to? Minus 0 0.68. Now, the gradient sign has changed from positive to negative. This shows that minus 3 is a maximum point. Remember the principle. If it changes from positive to negative, it is a maximum point. From negative to positive is minimum. From positive to Negative is maximum. So, x equal to half, x equal to half is a minimum point. x equal to one half is a minimum point. x equal to minus three is a maximum point. x equal to minus three is maximum. So how do we determine the minimum and maximum values now? To determine the maximum and the minimum values, we'll plug each of them into this expression, and the resulting values are the minimum values and the maximum values, respectively. So let's plug half first into this. Half is 0 0.5. That is 4 times 0 0.5 cubed plus 15 times 0 0.5 squared minus 18 times 0 0.5 plus 7. What is this equal to? This will give me 2.25, which is the same thing as 9 over 4. So, a minimum point corresponds to a minimum value. This is the minimum value. Minimum value. Now, what is the maximum value? Let's plug in minus 3 into the same function. All right? Okay, let me just do that here. 4 times minus 3 cubed plus 15 times minus 3 squared minus 18 times minus 3 plus 7. And this is equal to 88. So, a maximum point of minus 3 corresponds to a maximum value of 88. This is the maximum value have our minimum value and we have the maximum value. Let us see the second method analysis. To determine the maximum or the minimum point, we'll look for the second derivative with respect to x of the function and substitute into it the values of x. If the result is positive, that is, if it is greater than zero, then it is a minimum point. If the result is less than zero, that is negative, it is a maximum point. And if the result is zero, it is a point of inflection. Remember I said that the point of inflection is a point where there is neither maximum nor minimum. So we are still using the same function that we used earlier, but this time we are using a second method to get the minimum and the maximum point. When we differentiated this function, dy dx, we got 12 x squared plus 30x minus 18. 
So let us take the second derivative of this function with respect to x. That is d squared y ds squared because we need it here, ds squared. Okay? Differentiate this again. Differentiate 12x squared, we get 24x. Differentiate 30x, we get what? 30. Differentiate minus 18, we get 0. Remember, at dy dx equal to 0, we got x equal to half or x equal to minus 3. These two values are still needed. Don't forget, that's what we got earlier. We are going to make use of it here. So, after getting the second derivative, we are going to plug each of these values into it and see what happens, okay? Let us plug half into it first. The value of d squared y, dx squared, at x equal to half, which is, okay, 1 over 2, 0 0.5. In place of x, here, I'll write 1 over 2. 24 times 1 over 2 plus 30. 2 here, 1, 2 here, 12. 12 plus 30 is 42. 42 is actually greater than 0. That is the point. And based on the principle, if it is greater than 0, that is, if it is positive, the point is what? It's a minimum point. That is to say that x equal to half is a minimum point. Remember, that's what we got in the first method. So, let us determine the value of d squared where the x squared at x equal to minus 3 and see whether it will be maximum or minimum point. d squared y, dx squared, at x equal to minus 3 will be this. Plug in minus 3 for x here. That will be 24 times minus 3 plus what? 30. Of course, this is going to give us a negative number, which is less than 0. 24 times minus 3 is minus 72. Minus 72 plus 30 is minus 42. And minus 42 is a negative number that is less than 0. And going by this second method, if it is less than 0, that is negative, it is a maximum point. Remember that we got minus 3 as a maximum point in the first method. So you can see that any method we use here will produce the same result. So, this is how to determine maximum and minimum values, maximum and minimum points. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, and don't forget to share this video to your friends and to your classmates. I will see you in the next one. Keep watching.